Hey, what's going on guys? Maji here, bringing the patch notes rundown for the game update of November the 13th, 2012. There's a lot more to go through this week, so hopefully this will be a little bit longer than last week's patch note video. First up, under the graphical category, all Dominion Tower gloves are now using the correct color particle effects. The dragonkin and the tail of two cats cutscene have been graphically updated. Ariane, Ozen, the Raptor, Owen, and Xenia no longer appear multiple times in certain locations. They fixed an issue with flickering on one of the docks in the Fremenic province. The yo-yo animation has been corrected. The bow slash curtsy icon now switches correctly when a player switches gender. A small graphical glitch has been fixed on a wall in Varak. Jimmy ke Jimmy's kegs are now visible while wearing a piece of headgear from Solomon's General Store. They fix an issue with the fencing outside of the Legends Guild. The floor bridge in Mayor Ditch has been realigned. I guess that's how you pronounce that, anyway. They fix some issues with the tropical style roof in player owned houses. Solomon Store mining animations no longer play when a player tries to open a mining door in Dungeoneering that they don't have the requirements for. They fix some stretching on Stanky Morgan's Chief's Thief Robins. Estriths and the Doomsayer's Faces. Boy, that was some interesting names. <laughs> Royal Dragon had chaps no longer attached to crossbows when firing. Crafter Dirndl's apron no longer clips through knees when burying bones. They fix an animation issue when filling the ogre bellows. The Tokar Call no longer clips through Barrow's equipment. Necromancer staves now have the skulls attached to the staff. The female agility skill cape no longer has trim on the bottom of the cape. Muscle bound arms now appear more muscular. Priests and soften them no longer look so patchy. And finally, under graphical this week, items no longer float if dropped on top of a player owned house stuff trophy head. Under the quest challenges and achievements category, players can now reclaim the Goffin and Amulet from Doric during the Denulf post quest task. Several non-quest journal interfaces that display similar to the quest journal have been updated to work with the notice board changes. Several quest journals have been updated to use a new quest journal color scheme. The battlefish interface in the Some Like It Cold quest will now work correctly with the health overlay in fixed screen mode. The correct task completion message will now appear after summer's end. They've added some hyphens to the plenty potionary task to stop wrapping the task on the task interface wow that's some hard words to say this week <laughs> the sawmill challenge no longer accepts quick jobs or is mined from concentrated gold deposits while wearing the varak armor plate body will now count towards the relevant mining challenge the unpinned task button and the hide task button on the main game screen now function individually making it possible to have a task pinned but not display in the main game window. The three quest points awarded for the Prince Alley Rescue quest have now been removed from the game. As such, the quest point total has been lowered from 338 down to 335. Next up, under the skills and minigames category, the first wave of the fight kiln will now spawn correctly when a player tries to click out of a dialogue window. A blocked location has been removed at the Herblore Habitat to prevent Ejidinko getting stuck. And players can no longer gain lots of experience from the Dagonoth Sentinels in the Dominion Tower. So that method of training attack seems to have been patched up or nerfed, should I say. I don't really know how they fixed that, but I guess time will tell. And finally this week under the other category, the Cure Poison option on the Life Points icon near the minibap now works correctly with the prayer book reward from the Great Brain Robbery. The Falador South Wall Agility Shortcut now awards a token amount of agility experience. Ghostly Robe Bottoms have been added to the Dragon Keepsake Box, box White List. Wow. <laughs> Some audio has been added in the Calphite Nursery and the Vulture Area of the Desert. There is now a warning on exiting the Tears of Guthix Cave about needing a light source. A ladder in the Lighthouse Dungeon has been rotated to make it conform to the laws of physics. Gravestones will now be moved out of Botany Bay. Locked Dungeoneering doors no longer break players' route finding, which is a freaking awesome fix. 
An issue with the assist system displaying the wrong amount of bonus experience being awarded has now been fixed. The Ursus Shoe Shop now refers to the bluish shoe color, roguish brown, as blue. Hit marks now appear on the final hit against the carnivorous chinchampas. We have improved the examine info on cooking urns to avoid misinterpretation. So that's definitely a good update. Broadcasted messages will no longer refer to the Bando's War Shield as a Bando's Shield. Players can no longer get behind the Warrior's Guild Bank. A typo has been fixed in Willow's chat. They fixed a typo in the Adventurer's Log when obtaining Dragon Rider gear from the KBD. And free players will now be moved out of the Chaos Temple upper level in the wilderness. So that is all of the patch notes for this game update. There was a, a dramatic increase in the amount this week over last week. And I'm sure next week will have a nice big chunk with the EOC coming. You can check out one of the other two recent videos on the screen. And feel free to subscribe to my channel for another rundown next week. I must thank you all for watching and enjoy the update.